فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد we are now, inshallah ta'ala, going to take the next lesson for the kitab. Wasiyatul Imam Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi Litilmidihi al-Shaykh Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Mu'allimi We stopped at the al-matlab al-thalith. Shahadatu an la ilaha illa Allah Wa ma'anaha Annahu la haqiqa bi an yu'bada illa Allah Wa al-ibadatu هي الخضوع والتذلل والتذلل طلبا لنفع غيبي تسمي العرب الطلب إذا كان الطالب أعلى من المطلوب منه أمرا فإن كان مثله سمته الالتماسا فإن كان أعلى منه سمته سؤالا فإن كان النفع غيبيا سمته دعاء فالملك إذا طلب من خادمه شيئا قيل أمره بذا بكذا قيل أمره بكذا ابن ابن يحيى المعلم عبد الرحمن ابن يحيى المعلم he now goes into the third unit or the third chapter and he's going to be speaking about شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله this is the advice this is the bequest he is giving to his student and he tells him الشهادة أن لا إله إلا الله Shahada to Allah ilaha illallah means Ila ma'buda bi haqqin illallah That there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the evidence for us to say that there is none worthy of worship except Allah Is from the ayah Thalika bi anna Allah huwa al-haqq Wa anna ma yad'una min dunihi huwa al-baatil Because Allah mentions in this ayah Thalika bi anna Allah huwa al-haqq that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the haqq. So in the shahada, what do we say? We say, لا معبود بحق إلا الله. That's what the shaykh says. ومعناها, the meaning is, لا حقيقة بأن يعبد إلا الله. That there is no person who deserves to be worshipped. That ayah is in Surah Al-Hajj, ayah 62. ذلك بأن الله هو الحق. وأنما يدعون من دونه هو الباطل. وأن الله هو العلي الكبير. It's in Surah Al-Hajj, Ayah 62. وَالْعِبَادَةُ عِبَادَةُ What is it that we single Allah in? إِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ بِالْعِبَادَةُ We single Allah in عِبَادَةُ So if that's something we single Allah in, the person has to understand the haqiqa and the reality of iman. So the, the reality of ibadah. If somebody tells to you, you have to single Allah in ibadah. Then the question is, is what is ibadah? The scholars, when they look at ibadah, they look at it from two angles. بِعْتِبَارَيْنِ They look at, it from, look at it from two angles. One of them, the shaykh here, he mentions it himself, which is, we, they look at it from the angle of it as a ta'abud, as an act of worship. So ibadah min bab ta'abud. In other words, you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the worshipping you're doing, how are you going to do it? That is called a ta'abud. And the other one is al muta'abbadu bihi. The thing that you're going to worship Allah by. And the act that you're going to come with. So the Shaykh, he gives you the definition of one of the two. And the other one, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to bring. He gives you the tarif of when it is what? From the angle of at-ta'abud. He says, وَالْعِبَادَةُ هِيَ الْخُضُوعُ وَالْتَذَلُّلُ طَلَبًا لِنَفْعٍ غَيْبِي And then you'll see what the difference is. He says that, that the ibadah is what? It is khudu' wa tadallul. That the person humiliates himself. He belittles himself. 
And whilst he is doing the khudu' and the tadallul, he is doing it with kamalul mahabbah, with complete love. So it is ma'a, it is ghayatul dhulli ma'a ghayatil mahabbah. Ama kamalul dhulli ma'a kamalil mahabbah. This is a ta'abud. In other words, the salah is the muta'abbadu bihi. But how do I pray the salah? How do I come with things? I do it in what way? With complete love and complete humiliation is a ta'abud. Al-muta'abbadu bihi is the act of worship that I'm going to come with. The thing that I'm going to bring to Allah. This is the definition Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah brought. Which is what? What is a ibadah? In other words, what is it that you can worship Allah with? What can I classify as a ibadah and say, Akhi, this is an act of worship. This is called al-muta'abbadu bihi. And it is what it, Ibn Taymiyyah says, Ismun jami'un likulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardah. من الأقوال والأعمال الظاهرة والباطنة. and he says this in his kitab العبودية page thirty eight. he says it is a general term in everything which Allah سبحانه وتعالى loves and he is pleased with whether it be a speech or an action whether that action is external or internal doesn't matter. now that's عبادة. anything that falls under that definition you'll say this is عبادة. But how do you do it? Kamalu dhulli ma'a kamalil mahabba. With complete love and complete humiliation. And then look what he adds on to that. Linaf'in ghaybi. In other words, linaf'in ghaybi. What does it mean? You are awaiting a benefit that is unseen. So if I ask you to do for me something. Can you give me that phone? And you give it to me. And I've asked, this is not a, like if I ask you for children, هذه نفع غيبي. In other words, he's trying to احتراز on حي حاضر بما يقدر عليه. It falls under that, نفع غيبي. That's what it is. حي حاضر بما يقدر عليه. You're asking the person who's alive. The person has to be حي. حي. That is it. He's حي, he's alive. That's one. Two, Hadr, he's with you. Three, Bimayakdu, and he's able to do it. Now, somebody <coughs> may say, Where is the evidence for this? For we were commanded to only ask Allah. The istishab and the asal is that you're not, only, you're not allowed to ask anyone other than Allah. Where is your evidence that you can ask anyone other than Allah? So that person, he has to give us evidence. And every place he brings the examples from where he's allowed to ask other than Allah, like Nabi Lahi Musa asked a man for help, will say he was present. He asked him of that he was able to. وَدَخَلَ الْمَدِينَةَ عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ شِيَعَتِي وَهَذَا مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيَعَتِي عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ فَاسْتَغَاثَ Istighatha is what he was used here. This istighatha is permissible. لِمَا you're trying to use the ayah for something that is naf'un ghaybi, something that we can't see. Does that make sense? Is that crystal clear? Yeah. So <clears throat> the person has to do that. That is the definition of Shaykh al-Islam. Uh, how can I know that Allah is pleased with this? And how can I know Allah loves this? This is another point. When Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah said, Ismun jami'u likulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah, yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardah. Allah loves it and he's pleased with this. How do I know what Allah is loved with, please? I'm not, revelation is not coming down on me. And this is known by, by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the one who's going to let us know what Allah tabarak wa ta'ala loves and what Allah tabarak wa ta'ala doesn't love or dislikes. How do we know that which Allah is pleased with and that which he's not pleased with? The Prophet is going to tell us. That's his job alayhi salatu wa sallam. Then this, brothers, these definitions are things that make you truly understand the concept. They make you understand. That's why many people, because of it, they fall into things that are shirkiyat. They fall into it, shirkiyat. Very good. Then the Shaykh, rahimahullah, he goes into saying, that if, if a, the word talab, to ask, because he used that word, 
the Arabs, why, what do they mean by the word talab? He said the Arabs, if, pay attention, if the person you ask, if the person, sorry, who's asking you to do the thing, if he's higher than you, the one that's, the one who's requesting, if he's higher than you in rank, or level, and he's asking somebody who is, you who's lower than him, then this, he said, is called a command. If the request is coming from a high station, it's coming from a high level, or high authority, and it's coming down the ladder, it is called a command. But if it is some two who are equal, but if they are equal in level, the Arabs, they call it iltimasan. Are you with me? Remember, subhanAllah, the word he used at the beginning, and I said that shows his humility. Mm. He says, he's looking, he's requesting from me, meaning he and I are both the same. Yeah. So Arabs, they call it iltimas. Iltimas is when you request somebody from somebody, something, but you're both equal. فَإِنْ كَانَ أَعْلَى مِنْهُ But if, if he is, فَإِنْ كَانَ أَعْلَى مِنْهُ but if the one who's been asked is lower, it is called su'al. It's called su'al. Are you with me? So if I'm the one asking you, and I'm lower than you, it's called what? Su'al. Are you there? Pay attention. Wallahi, these are qawaid. But what about if I'm asking you? I'm lower than you, and I'm asking you. This is the difference between su'al and du'a. What about if I am lower than you? And I ask you for something that is ghaybi. It's called dua. So the dua is the one who is asking is low and he's also asking for something that is ghaybi. Araft? This is qa'ida muhimma jiddan. Fi ghayati al-ahmiya. If I ask you for your phone and, I, and you're, mashallah, the president or the king of the country and I ask you for something, I say, okay, you know what, give me five pounds. Are you there? You know, I, I ask you for something, and you're higher than me. I've asked you for something you're able to do. This is su'al. But if I ask you for children, but you're higher than me in authority. If I ask you for children, it's called du'a. It's called du'a, because I'm asking you for something which is ghaybi. Are you with me? He said, فَالْمَالِكُ the king, uh, sorry, the master. فَالْمَالِكُ, فالمالك the king, I'm the master. إِذَا طَالَبَ مِنْ خَادِمِي If he asks from his slave, Something, what's, what's this called? A command. Amarahu. What about if a student asks from his colleague, his, student, his classmate? What is that called? قيل التمس منه. التمس. والرعوي إذا طلب من الملك شيئا قيل سأله كذا. What about if a, if a shepherd, he goes and he asks, yeah, from the king. Or if a slave asks from the king, what is that going to be called? Su'al. Are you with me? Or a person who wants to, who's complaining about a matter, and he goes to a leader, and he تقول سألت الملك أن ينصفني من خصمي. The person will say, I asked the king to be fair with me in my opponent. I asked him. سألته. Are you with me? وَلَا يُقَالُ And the person does not say دَعُوتُ الْمَلِكَ I do done dua to the king. You don't say that. أَنْ يَنْصِفَنِي مِنْ خَصْمِي That he is just to me regarding my, my opponent. No. نَعَمْ Yes, لكن يُقَالُ دَعُوتُ فُلَانًا بِمَعْنَى نَادِيتُ وَهَذَا مَعْنَى الْآخَرِ And he said, yes. The word da' dua is used sometimes as calling somebody. نِدَاء and dua sometimes. Even though in his kitab, Kitab al he goes, mashallah, into this. It's another thing. He goes in too much. You get fawaid from him. Alayhi rahmatullah. So he goes, وَهَذَا مَعَنَا الْآخَرَةِ This is another meaning. إِنَّمَا إِنَّمَا الْخَاصُ بِالنَّفْعِ الْغَيْبِيُّ هُوَ الدُّعَى Allah, underline that. The dua has a distinct thing, which is, it is a benefit which is unseen. بِمَعَنَ السُّؤَالِ الَّذِي هُوَ طَلَبُ النَّفْعِ Dua is not just su'al. It is su'al with 
requesting a benefit that is unseen. Unseen. So dua bi ma'na su'al. Su'al naf'un ghaybi huwa ruhu al-ibadah. And this is, that's why the Prophet said in the hadith alayhi salatu wa salam, ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. The du'a is ibadah because he goes and saying, for du'a, because du'a is asking with the want for a benefit that is unseen. That's the essence of ibadah. You know there's a God. He exists. He gives you. He's the, he's the only one who knows this. No one else. The dua, it shows that you've actually accepted. There's something you don't know. There's something that he knows. You've also accepted that it's in his hand and it's not in your hand. You also require, you realize that to get it, you have to ask him. All of that is in there. Just the dua. Look how much powerful meaning I in it. And that is why Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he referred to it as ibadah in many places in the Quran. For example, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلِيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ But look, Allah says, قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْلَا دُعَاؤُكُمْ فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ فَسَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِي زَمَا But this ayah clearly says, وَقَارَ رَبُّكُمْ Your Lord has said, أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِيبُ لَكُمْ Underline this verse is very powerful. Allah is saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Ghafir, ayah 16, قُلْ سَيْتْ Rabbukum, your Lord, Udu'uni, says to you, ask me. Supplicate to me. Astajib lakum, I will answer your supplication. Inna alladheena verily those, yastakbiruna huwa arrogant, an ibadati from my ibadah. What ibadah was mentioned here? So Allah just said, Udu'uni an ibadati. Then, the dua is an ibadah. لذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى يسيس وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعو مع الله أحدا نكرة في سياق أن يفيد العموم شو جنراليزيشن صح؟ they don't ask anyone my أصل is you can't ask anyone at all where's the استثناء for this for you نعم also, the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir, that the Prophet said, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. Are you with me? Ahmad, Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, and others narrated this. The scholars, what they did was they followed up the types of du'a there is. And this by istiqra of the nusus, the textual evidences, they divided, the ulama divided the du'a to two types. The first one is du'a ibadah Du'a ibadah means every form of ibadah that you do, why are you doing it for? You're asking Allah. What are you asking Him? Talabu, naf'un, ghaybi, sah? Hadahu. Every ibadah that you're doing, in it is a what? Su'al. You're asking for what? Naf'un, a benefit. Good. Hayyah. Ghaybi, that's unseen. That's what you're asking for. And sometimes you're asking for things that can be seen. But it's also got unseen things. Very good. So every form of ibadah, the salah becomes this one. So the dua ibadah, salah is in there. This one, uh, your niyat, the things that you leave for the sake of Allah will enter this. That's one. The second one is dua mas'alatin wa talab. Dua mas'ala. It's the dua of supplication. It is the asking one. You're asking Allah tabarak wa ta'ala this one for him to give you something. You're, they're asking here is, oh Allah, give me good. Or sometimes it is what? Oh Allah, remove from me and get rid of any harm that may afflict me. Protect me from it. Very good. فَالدُّعَاءُ بِمَعْنَ سُؤَالُ النَّفْعِ Let's go back to the matan again of the shaykh. فَالدُّعَاءُ بِمَعْنَ سُؤَالُ النَّفْعِ الْغَيْبِيِّ خُوَ الرُّوحُ الْعِبَادَةِ It is the essence and the true meaning of what ibadah is. وَبَقِيَّةُ الْعِبَادَاتِ And the remaining of the ibadat are مُتَضَمِّنَةٌ لَهُ It falls under dua. We just, how does it? From the angle of what? Dua ibadah? Or is it dua mas'ala? And Shaykh al-Islam Taymi summarized the dua and he said, the father, the mother of dua, the true meaning is ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. And Shaykh al-Islam Taymi said, if there was a, if there was any dua supplication better than it, Allah would have commanded us to do it. 
five times a day at least. It's five times a day in the salah, per salah, in every rak'ah. لأنها كلها يطلب بها النفع الغيبي فمن دعا الله عز وجل أي سأل منه أن يرحمه أو يشفيه أو يغنيه أو غير ذلك فقد عبده ومن دعا غير الله عز وجل أي سأل منه نفعا غيبيا فقد عبد غير الله عز وجل فأما الخضوع والتذلل طلبا لنفع غيبي فإن الله تعالى إذا أمر بالتذلل لغيره فامتثلنا ذلك كنا عابدين لله عز وجل لا لمن وقع الخضوع في الصورة له مستقدم إن شاء الله تعالى سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه